Hey fellow on fire informed Christians, I felt led to do this video today. Um, today is May 21st, 2021. COVID is here, the virus, the vaccination, all that kind of stuff is going through our society right now. Um, and everybody's talking about taking the mark of the beast and that type of thing online. Um, this video is not directed towards anybody, but um, I, I've learned a lot in the last two or three years and actually even in the last two or three months. Um, the mark of the beast, let's talk about it. My perspective, I am not, not, not worried about the mark of the beast anymore in my life. Um, two or three years ago was a different story. My fear to label it was I was worried about some microchip, some barcode. As a Christian, we're trying to stay in God's kingdom, not Satan's kingdom. Um, we're trying to avoid taking the mark of the beast at all costs. It consumes our mind. That was my fear, worry, concern. It, anyway, I do not have that anymore. I am free of that. And I'm going to explain why I got free of that very quickly. Um, so uh, one of my favorite teachers is Shane Willard. He's on YouTube. Um, he got his research. He names his researches that he used to. So you can go look that up. Um, so the mark of the beast. Obviously, it comes from, here's my Bible, Roman, uh, it comes from Revelation chapter 13, and it starts at kind of like verse 11. Um, so what is the mark of the beast? So a lot of the research shows uh, the mark of the beast was actually in the time of um, uh, Caesar Domitian. He, there's a place called the Agora. The Agora is actually, if you go to Turkey, there's actually a city called Ephesus. So um, in Ephesus, there was a place called the Agora, and you had to basically take a mark in the right hand in your forehead to be able to buy and sell goods in the Agora. So as John's getting this quote-unquote vision um, from the Lord, I, I guess, yeah, we'll call it a vision. Um, I believe he was referring to that. Um, Revelation is, I used, to, I used to always view Revelation as a prophetic book. Um, my eyes, God tends to tweak my <laughs> doctrine, my theology quite often, which is fine with me. So Revelation can be viewed, a lot of people view Revelation as prophetic. There's also very a lot of people who view Revelation as historic. And now I've had a chance to learn the historic side of it. Um, so if you are a die-hard literalist, um, God bless you, awesome. You, if you're that, the mark of the beast is going to be so clear to you if you believe the mark of the beast is upcoming. So once again, this is 2021. Whenever the mark of the beast happens, we're going to be having cell phones. We're going to be having YouTube. We're going to be having Tesla electric driving cars. We'll be able to fly all over the world, you know, whatever. We'll have airplanes. So we're not going to go back to Amish times. We're going to have our laptops, iPads, all that kind of stuff. If the mark of the beast happens um, the way you are thinking or I was thinking, in my mind with a barcode or a microchip, you know, the Bill Gates microchip and the vaccine, whatever type of stuff. Anyway, um, I'm not going there because whatever. Anyway, have your own viewpoint. Um, the mark of the beast is going to be so clear. And the reason why I say that is because if you read Revelation chapter 13, if you're a diehard Bible literalist, what has to happen first? Two beasts have to rise up. One of them comes up out of the sea. This beast has seven heads and 10 horns coming up out of the sea, whatever, Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, Gulf of Mexico, wherever it comes up out of, it is going to be so obvious that this beast is coming up out of, the, out of the ocean more than likely. A second beast has to come up out of the land. How that happens, where that happens, you're the literalist, I don't know. Um, Anyway, if you're a literalist, this has to physically happen. And then that beast is going to be obviously recorded. People are going to have it on cell phones, YouTube, Instagram, you know, whatever the current social media is. So, and then that beast is going to then basically require everyone. So you're going to know these two beasts if you are a prophetic historical literalist in the word. Um, you're going to know who the two beasts are and you're, the beast is going like, to literally tell you and everyone else on earth, hey, you need to take this mark. So it is going to be so obvious. Um, and this is funny because actually I just kind of read back and looked at this today, literally May 23rd. And I was like, you know what? It's going to be obvious what the mark, what the mark of the beast is. I don't think this is literal anymore. I think that John was speaking prophetically. Uh, but anyway, all that to say, I am no longer concerned about taking the mark of the beast. From my understanding, um, are we probably going to go to a one world government again? Yeah. And technically, um, not to go down this road too much, but if you're worried about a one world currency, we're kind of already on it. Um, and what I mean by that, we're on a, the US dollar is 
China technically <laughs> already the one world currency. It's the petrodollar. You cannot buy and sell oil. You need oil. You need all this kind of energy. You cannot buy oil unless you're using the petrodollar. So if you're worried about the one world currency, you can kind of make an argument. We already on that. We already have that. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's my thing. I, I want to post this video again. I'm not confronting anybody. I just want to say I am free of having to fear the worry about taking the mark of the beast because there's a lot of really solid evidence. I mean, actually, it's very true evidence that it's already happened and it is old news. Whenever I hear a pastor talk about the mark of the beast, I'm like, well, yeah, it happened a long time ago. It was um, Domitian was the emperor. Um, the number 666, you can literally Google or, you know, whatever looks up online. Um, just type in Nero's number and you get 666 uh, out of there. That, and, um, yeah, the beast. The beast was also known as Domitian. Uh, he was a Roman uh, Caesar emperor. So all I have to say, anyway, it's um, very fascinating stuff, but I am free and clear as a Christian. I still love the Lord. I still you know, try to advance God's kingdom, get everybody saved, all that kind of stuff. But um, I don't think this is literal anymore. Are we maybe going to go back to a one world currency again? Well, we're kind of already on it with the US dollar, but um, I was worried about the euro for a long time, but I don't think we're going to have that necessarily anymore. Um, you can also look at the IMF, the International Monetary Fund with the SDRs. SDR stands for Special Drawing Rights, um, but that's another conversation too. So uh, anyway, there's, there's tons of interesting things, but all I'd say, I'm no longer worried about it. Um, the market of beast is going to be so obvious if you're a literalist in the book of Revelation. So that's my two cents. Anyway, I feel totally free. I don't have to worry about it anymore. And hopefully that's going to be encouraging to someone.